Hey, I'm Jamie from Stonemeyer Games, and we are the makers of Wingspan and Wormspan. So today, I thought I would go through all of the Wingspan and Wormspan birds and dragons and pick my 25 favorites of all of them. All of them, for various reasons. You'll see there are a wide variety of reasons. These aren't like the best cards to play necessarily. These aren't always the prettiest cards. Sometimes they are, though. Um, and some of them are just examples of my favorite mechanisms in these games. That's the utility I'm hoping to offer you designers who are watching this. There are some pretty clever designs, I believe, from Elizabeth Hargrave in Wingspan and Connie Vogelman in Wormspan in terms of these cards. So I have these in alphabetical order. They aren't ranked 1 to 25. These are just 25 cards that I love from Wingspan and Wormspan, Dragons and Birds. And let's go over and start to look at them. So here is the first one. This is the Aged Sea Dragon. And I picked this one for a few reasons. Many of the cards that I picked are because I love the art. And I love the art on this card. There's something about the aesthetic of the spots uh, that I really love. But the reason I wanted to highlight this card in particular is because it lets you, whenever you advance your adventurer onto this dragon, you gain a Dragon Guild. You advance on the Dragon Guild. And this is one of my favorite mechanisms in Wormspan, that in addition to this player map that you have, there is a Dragon Guild that you're advancing on. And the Guild is different every time you play. I think there are four, no, no, there are eight. Four, no, four different Guilds, double-sided based on player count in Wormspan. Um, maybe even five, four or five. And you advance on it, and you gain benefits as you advance on it. And some of the benefits are little benefits, and some of the benefits are pretty big benefits. I really like the addition of the Dragon Guild in uh, in Wormspan, and so I wanted to highlight a dragon that has you advance on the Dragon Guild. So Aged Sea Serpent here. Next up, we have the Australian Ibis. This bird I picked for a few different reasons. One is the story behind it. At down below at the bottom of the bird, you can see the, the fun fact. In urban areas, this bird is nicknamed a bin chicken for its habit of eating trash. Apparently this bird is very commonly called a bin chicken. And if you look up videos of the bin chicken, you can see it in action and it really does, it is very good at taking things out of the trash. Um, the when activated ability, in general, I, I love the when activated abilities, the engine building in Wingspan. This one says, when activated, shuffle the discard pile, then draw two bird cards from it. Choose one and tuck it behind this bird or add it to your hand, discard the other. I love throughout Wingspan, throughout Wormspan, I love any ability that really embraces the theme of the bird. And many cards do this in different ways to different degrees. I think this ability fully, fully embraces the uh, the theme of this bird, the idea that you are taking the, the, the cards that have been trashed that aren't in the game anymore, shuffling them and pulling them back into the game temporarily to either tuck it or add it to your hand. Really clever design here for the Australian Ibis. Benelli's Eagle. I love kind of cheating cards into play in, in general in games. I love opportunities to play cards kind of for free, not exactly for free, but somewhat for free. And Benelli's Eagle gives you a way, gives, gives you an alternate cost to play this card. Um, the alternate cost is shown here with this little asterisk. It says when played for each, uh, for each rodent in this bird's cost, you may pay one card from your hand instead. If you do, tuck the paid card behind this bird. Brilliant design. I love this design because it means that even if you don't have the rodents or if you only have some rodents, you can pay cards from hand instead of those rodents. And the cards aren't just discarded. They go behind Benelli's Eagle, making it more powerful. So if I uh, if I say I have three cards in hand and I don't want to pay any of the rodents, I can pay three cards from hand, tucking them beneath the Benelli's Eagle without paying any cost up here. Benelli's Eagle is worth eight points already. Each of those tough cards is worth one point. So that would be a, an 11 point play right there um, without spending any food at all. I love that. There are a couple cards like this. This is, I think, the biggest one in the game. And so I really, really love playing Benelli's Eagle. And I should say for all these cards that I'm highlighting, I definitely looked for cards that when they show up in the card row in Wingspan or Wormspan, I'm a little extra eager to get them for either the general reasons I'm mentioning or the specific reasons that I'm mentioning. And this is another one of those, the Carolina Chickadee. I like this card for one specific reason. Um, and really, I have a couple different reasons. But the main reason is that I have a running joke with my partner, Megan, that every bird is a chickadee. So whenever I see a bird, um, even though 
I am the publisher of a of like the major bird themed game. Um, whenever I see a bird, I say, oh, there's a little chickadee over there. And it might be an eagle. Like it might be a giant bird. It might be a bird that is nowhere close to a chickadee. It is a running joke. It is an inside joke, but I enjoy it very much. So um, pretty much every bird is a chickadee to me. And so I needed to highlight the actual chickadee in the game. There are two chickadees, I believe, in Wingspan. This is one of them, the Carolina chickadee. And I like it because it's a very easy bird to play. When activated, gain one wheat from the supply or one seed from the supply and cash it on this card. A very good, um, very easy when activated ability to activate. Like you don't have to have the wheat in your supply. It comes from the general supply. So pretty much every time you activate it, you are getting a point for this bird. And it's one that you can easily play early in the game. Um, yeah, so the Carolina Chickadee. Wanted to highlight that one in my top 25. Next up, we had the Cerulean Warbler. And I picked this for two specific reasons. One, I love the art. I think it's a really, really adorable, beautiful bird. And so for that reason, I often it's often highlighted to me in the, in the card row whenever I see it come up. But I also love cards in Wingspan that give you extra bonus cards. And this is one of them. When played, draw two bonus cards and keep one. Because at the beginning of the game of Wingspan, you only get one bonus card. And so I love extra ways to add new bonus cards to give me more, uh, more opportunities to find a sense of direction in the game beyond my own intrinsic desires to get cute birds in Wingspan. And this is one of them. A way to get an extra bonus card through the Cerulean Warbler. Next up, we have a dragon, the Clairvoyant Fey Dragon. Uh, well, the reason I wanted to highlight this dragon in particular is that a lot of a lot of Connie's designs in general, Wormspan and Apiary, are built around the idea of positive player interaction, and I love positive player interaction. Um, I love opportunities that help me but also help other players around me. Because one of the reasons I play games is that I want to have fun with other people. And I have fun when they're having fun. And one of the ways I can help other people have fun is by giving them free stuff. And so this card says, when played, gain two cards, two dragon cards. And then each opponent draws one dragon card from the deck. I love this design for multiple reasons. One is the positive player interaction. All other, all other players are getting a card. I'm getting two cards. But also, each opponent draws a card from the deck, so it doesn't slow the game down. They can draw those essentially simultaneously, while I get to choose two dragon cards of my choice from face up, from the face up dragon card row, or from the deck itself. So I, I love that it uh, it doesn't slow the game down to play this card, but it potentially helps all players, and it helps me a little bit extra. So that's the clairvoyant fey dragon. Back to birds. Here's the Eurasian magpie. I selected this one for a couple different reasons, as many different reasons are going into these selections. One is I love the introduction in the European expansion of end of round abilities. And this is one of them. At the round end, choose one other player for each action cube on their, um, their uh, 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 not wetlands, dry, um, uh, meadow, forgetting the name of it, uh, cash one of any food from the supply on any of your birds. Grasslands, that's what it is, grasslands. Uh, I like this for three reasons. One, the round end power. I like the existence of round end powers. Two, I like the idea that in uh, in European expansion and other expansions, you're looking at where players, including yourself, have placed their action tokens, which actions they've actually taken in that round. There are even a couple of birds, I don't think I have one in here, but a couple that look to see if you activated all four different types of actions in a round. Um, and... Uh, I guess I was going to say that the third reason was positive player interaction, but this actually doesn't help other players. It just gives you a reason to pay attention to other players, which is one of my favorite forms of interaction. Um, I like interaction that doesn't necessarily disrupt other players, but gives me a reason to pay attention to what they're doing. And this bird does that really well. Eurasian magpie. Next up, we have an owl. I love the owls in general. This is the forest owlet. Uh, I, I just, I like the idea of owls. Um, but the reason I like this one is one of my favorite mechanisms in games in general is push your luck. And this adds a little bit of that. When activated, choose any two dice. So you can choose dice in the bird feeder, outside of the bird feeder, your choice. Roll them up to three times. So here's another choice. You roll the two dice. Do you roll them again? Do you stop there? Do you roll again? Each time, if you roll at least one uh, bug, okay, insect, or rodent, cash one of them here or cash one here. If not, stop and return all food cashed here this turn. So you can roll two dice. Say you hit one of those, you get one. Do you decide to stop there or do you keep going? Um, and if you, on any of those three rolls, if you don't hit a rodent or an, or an uh, invertebrate, uh, you have to return all the ones that you would have collected. 
I love push your luck in general. I love this idea. And there's a couple different cards like this in the Asia expansion for Wingspan. So I wanted to highlight the Forest Owlet. Next up, we have the Gould's, Gould's Finch, a card that will probably be renamed. We are eventually renaming all the birds in Wingspan uh, so they aren't named after people. That is an ongoing process. Aside from that, I love the colors of this bird. Look at the beautiful colors of this bird. It's stunning. I love the illustration. Um, but I also love in Oceania, the Oceania expansion, the addition of the new game end powers. Uh, this one says game end, play a bird, pay its normal food and egg cost. If it has a when played or game end power, you may use it. So the other reason I, play, I chose this one, and I might have another bird like this as well, is that I love, one of my favorite things to do in Wingspan is to play birds. I will choose generally to play birds over anything else if I have the option, um, because I love the idea of creating this beautiful tableau of birds. And so this is an opportunity at the end of the game to play an extra bird, which I love. I love that I get to play an extra bird just for free. I don't have to take a turn to play a bird. I just get to do it. And so it's, it feels like an extra turn essentially in this game when you get to play an extra bird. So I love any bird that lets me play an extra bird. And there are even a few that let's give you a little discount when you do that. I love that too. That's the Gould's Finch. Here's another bird that I picked partially because it's stunningly beautiful, the many colored fruit dove. Uh, thank you to uh, the artist Anna or Anna and Natalia who illustrated all of the birds in Wingspan. I think there are over 400 birds at this point in Wingspan. It's pretty incredible. And they often spend upwards of 10 to 20 hours on each bird illustrating it. Um, it's incredible what they put into this game. The ability here, oh, partially it's a very easy bird to play early in the game, and so when activated ability, so if you play it early, you're gonna get this ability throughout the entire game. When activated, all players gain one uh, berry from the supply. You gain one additional berry from the supply. One of the reasons I chose this, similar to what I mentioned earlier in Wormspan, is I love positive player interaction. So I wanted to highlight a bird in Wingspan. Many, many do feature this, but another bird that features uh, positive player interaction. That's the many col colored fruit dove. Here's Multani's Warbler from the European expansion. Uh, again, oh, here's the one that I mentioned here. The, the idea of a round end power or any power where you look at whether or not you completed, wh whether or not you took the different types of actions in the game. So if you use all four types of actions this round, play another bird, pay its normal food and a cost. So this does like all the things that I love in Wingspan. It has a round end ability. Um, it has uh, a, a reason to diversify your strategy each round, to, to take all four actions. And it also has a way that you get to play an extra bird without taking a turn. Love this. Multani's Warbler. Or Multoni's Warbler. The North Island Brown Kiwi. Oh, yeah. I love this one. And this is partially nostalgic because in 2019, we took a trip to New Zealand and uh, we got to encounter some kiwi there. And they are... As weird and fascinating, actually, I would say they were far more weird and fascinating than you can imagine from seeing a picture of a bird like this, even a beautiful picture of it. They, they're they nocturnal. They run around really, really fast and they stick their head in the ground. They are, they are really uh, a lot of fun to watch. Um, and I love, as I mentioned earlier, I love cards that give you extra bonus cards. So this is largely nostalgic. Whenever I see this card come up, I love to get it. Actually, and also I do love the star here. The star is kind of a wild nest, giving you some flexibility in terms of um, scoring nest-based goals and bonus cards. So I like that in general. North Island Brown Kiwi. Here's the olive-backed sunbird. I chose this for a few different reasons. One, this is a swift start card. You can tell from the corners here that this is one of the cards. This is one's in Wingspan Asia, but there are also similar cards in Wingspan that are part of the swift start, start pack, which is a pack that helps you quickly onboard someone into the game, helps you teach someone how to play Wingspan um, by just jumping into the game and playing the game. And Elizabeth did an incredible job, I think, with the Swift Start guides to welcome more people into the game. In general, I love gaming tutorials and guides like this. Um, we have them in many of our games, but I, I think she executed it really, really well here. So I love that. And then the win activated ability, each player may roll any one die and gain that food from the supply. So another uh, positive player interaction ability that uh, I, I just really, really enjoy those styles of abilities. So those types of abilities. The olive-backed sunbird here. The osprey. Okay, I have a few birds in here that are from the fan art pack for Wingspan. So this is a pack of over 250 birds illustrated by uh, fans of the game, fans of Wingspan, that used a variety of different media to illustrate the birds. 
and uh, and we publish them. So there's there's people of all different skills, mediums, ages, it around the world who contributed to this fan art pack. There are no no new birds in the pack. It's just new art for existing birds. But I think it is a great present to give someone who loves Wingspan if they don't already have it. I am delighted every time I play with a Wingspan fan art pack to see the amount of time and talent and creativity that went into each of, the, each of these birds. And one of my favorites, I have a few that I'll mention here, but one of my favorites is the Osprey here, illustrated by Jonathan Liu, who used an Etch-a-Sketch. You can see it here. He used an Etch-a-Sketch. This is So this is a photo of an actual Etch-a-Sketch that he uh, used to create this bird, which I think is incredible. Look at that, that's, that's an incredible illustration using an Etch-a-Sketch. I love the creativity behind it. That's the only Etch-a-Sketch illustration in the fan art pack. Next up, we have my favorite bird in real life in general because it's the fastest animal on earth, the peregrine falcon. Uh, this animal, as the fun fact says, diving to attack a peregrine, peregrine falcon can reach speeds up to 200 miles per hour. I love that in general. I, I mean, I've been fascinated by this bird for a long time, um, just because I like I like fast animals. And uh, this is the peregrine falcon. I love that the bird for that reason. But I also love the when activated ability. When activated, look at a bird card from the deck. If it's less than 100 centimeters, tuck it behind this bird, if not discard it. So it's a little bit of that push your luck element, although you aren't really pushing anything. You're just kind of hoping for the best. Um, you're hoping to get lucky with a peregrine falcon every time you activate it. But I love I like that. I like looking at the 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 bird and seeing if I caught it in my in my dive. And if I get it, great. If not, I'll try again in a future turn. So I, I generally like this mechanism in uh, in wingspan, this idea of looking at the top part of the deck and hoping that it is a certain size. That's the peregrine falcon. Here is, back to dragons for a second. Here's the pocket amphitheater. Uh the ability here says at the end of the game. Gain three points if there is at least one other playful dragon in this cave. And so one of the differences between Wormspan and Wingspan, one of the things we added, that Connie added, is the idea of attributes, giving a little personality to these different dragons. Four different types. There's shy, aggressive, um, I'm forgetting one, and then playful. Playful here. And I like when, uh, so this one is a playful dragon that cares about other playful dragons. It wants to be with other playful dragons. So I love the theme of that. I love the extra dose of personality that it adds to these dragons. And adding tags like this gives you another mechanism to play around with for whether it's set collection, end game abilities. Um, it could have to do with like decreased cost, things like that. So I, I like the idea of adding little tags like this, especially if they add a dose of theme to games. So that's the pocket amphitheater and its playful attribute. Here's another fan art um, illustration. This one I chose largely because of the medium that this artist used. Emma Bowen brought this bird to life through embroidery art. I think there are two or three birds that used embroidery. I picked this one because I think it's just really impressive that she added this. Like, look at the colors in this. She added, there's a bunch of different types of colors of yarn in here that bring out, that bring this bird to life. Also has a nice positive player interaction ability. When activated, all players gain one seed from the supply. And I love positive player interaction. So that's the red crossbill. Thank you, Emma, for illustrating that one. Here is what I think is the cutest dragon in Wormspan, the scavenging cricket catcher. So I chose this partially for its cuteness, uh, its personality. Look, look at this little face. It, it's aggressive. It's a little pouty. I, I, I love, I love it when this dragon comes up. When it when it comes up, I have to have it. Also, though, it's one of the other things that's different between Wormspan and Wingspan. This is a hatchling. It's a different type of dragon that we don't have a bird equivalent of in Wingspan, where every time you walk your adventurer over this dragon, if you have a meat representing the crickets this dragon is catching, you can cash it from your supply here. So you can essentially feed this dragon a cricket. And then on a, kind of a separate ability that's tied to that, but also tied to any time that you cash a, a meat here, gain another meat. So you gain that meat into your supply. So you're cashing it here, that's worth a point. You're gaining a meat. Um, because this dragon is, when you feed it, it, it's going to catch other crickets for you. And then when the third one is cached, when the third meat is cached, so this is a one time per game ability, at the exact moment when the third one is cached, also gain a coin. Um, so that's a big, that's, a, that's an extra action essentially in the game when you gain that coin. So I like that the sense of a dragon growing up, that's the theme of these hatchlings, that they're, they're growing up over time. And then they grow up, and when they grow up, they they are extra beneficial to you. And this one gives you a coin. I really love the design of hatchlings in general, and this is my favorite hatchling. 
Speaking of adorable, I think this is probably the, what I, uh, in my opinion, is the cutest bird in Wingspan. This is the snow bunting, and I just love how cute it is. I, I, and this is this is the intrinsic side of me coming out. I make decisions in games sometimes based on preferences, based on what I think is is fun or playful or cute or whatever the reason is. And when this puffy white bird comes out, the snow bunting, I can't resist but to take it from the card row. The ability on it is, is pretty good as well. I, I, I'm glad that I can highlight one once between turns abilities. When another player tucks a card, a bird card, for any reason, I get to tuck one card from my hand behind this bird, then draw one card at the end of their turn. I, uh, at the end of, so it's the, the other player's turn. I like this in particular because not only is it a reason to pay attention to other players as the once between card abilities do, but I also like that uh, even though I'm tucking a card from, from hand, I'm losing a card, I get to redraw one at the end of that turn, which feels good as well. So I like that as well. That's the snow bunting. We only have a few left here. Here is the spry horned lung, dr lung dragon. I chose this for a couple different reasons. One, I love the art. Um, there are a few Asian-inspired dragons in the game, and I... I think this one is stunning. I think this illustration is absolutely incredible. I love this illustration of the spry horned lung dragon. And the other reason is similar to another dragon that I mentioned a minute ago, the cricket catcher. It feels good in Wormspan. Yet again, another one of the differences between Wormspan and Wingspan. There are ways to get extra actions in Wormspan. This coin represents essentially an extra action. And this is one of the ways to do it. When I play this dragon, I gain a coin, which can you typically not so an extra action. So I, I love this uh, this difference between Wingspan and Wormspan, that in Wormspan, you can actually gain new actions, extra actions per round, that all players aren't taking the exact same number of actions per round. That's the Spry Horned Lung Dragon. Here is the other, I think, cutest dragon in the game, the Striped Dragonette. And we actually have uh, Clementine Campardo, the artist behind Wormspan. She was very kind to send us a few of the originals from dragon from uh, Wormspan, and this is one of the dragons that she sent us. So this one will soon be hanging on our wall. We just framed it. Actually, the day that I'm filming this video is when we framed it and looked at putting it on the wall. I also like the ability gain two points for each objective where your marker is placed the lowest. So this means this is kind of a, a backup plan. If you haven't done well in the objectives in this game, the goals in Wormspan that all players have a chance to achieve, this is kind of a backup. So what you didn't do well, you get two points. For, uh, for having the lowest uh, marker on each of them. I like that backup. That's the striped dragonet. Here we have the trumpeter swan. I chose this for a very simple reason. Sometimes I like a simple choice in these games, especially at the end of the game. Um, and that is, and the trumpeter swan is worth nine points, one of the most valuable cards in Wingspan. Nine points. It's expensive. It doesn't do a lot. doesn't have an ongoing ability. But uh, but it's still nice to play. It feels nice to get nine points. And the other nice thing about Wingspan is that in Wormspan, both games, even when you aren't getting an ongoing benefit or any benefit at all, other than points at the end of the game from a, a bird or a dragon, you are still getting some benefits from it. You're improving your engine because you're pushing your action row along to the next uh, set uh, benefit on that on that action row and that habitat. And also it might help you with goals with this egg nest. It might help you with uh, with uh, laying eggs. There's still benefits to these cards, even if they aren't giving you an immediate ability or an ongoing ability. So I wanted to highlight the Trumpeter Swan for that. We're getting to near to the end here. Here's the Turkey Vulture. I mentioned how much I love playing cards for free, sometimes cheating them into play for free, like I mentioned earlier with Benelli's Eagle. But the Turkey Vulture is simply a free card. You don't have to feed it anything because it's a vulture. And so uh, I like that. I, I love playing a vulture early on in the game for free. Maybe the first card I play, I don't have to spend any food on it. I just get it into play. Again, start to improve my engine just because I have another bird there in, in the in the habitat. And it also has a once between turns ability. When another player's predator ability succeeds, I get to gain one food die from the bird feeder. Nice little ability. Again, a nice, nice other reason to pay attention to other players. And here is maybe the last one. I think this might be the last one. We'll see. There might be one other dragon or bird after this. This is Wadi's rough tail. This one for me, if it comes up in the card row, I have to take it right away because this is a dragon that is inspired by uh, my current cat and my beloved uh, cat, Biddy, who uh, we lost last year. Um, or we had to say goodbye to, unfortunately. So this is a combination of uh, Walter 
and Biddy in dragon form. And so I love it. I, I also have uh, the original, this one, Clementine was very kind to send us this dragon. And yeah, just uh, for, for personal reasons, I really, really love this dragon. Let's see if that was the last one. Nope, one one more. This is the last one, the yellow Baturn. This is the last fan art card that I selected. I love the art on it. That's part of the reason that I selected it. Really love the art. And I also love this as an early play in the game. Flexible food cost, only one food. You can only play it in the water habitat, uh, the wetlands. When activated, draw the card in the middle slot of the bird tray. The other reason I really li I like this ability is that it kind of takes away the choice a little bit. And sometimes in these games where I have a lot of things that I'm juggling, I'm juggling bonus cards. Which row do I want to activate? Which card do I want to take? Which food do I want to take? Sometimes I like it when a card makes that choice for me. And this one says, just draw the middle card in uh, the, of, the, of the bird tray. I like that. I, it, I, I wouldn't want this on every card, but I like sometimes for the game to make that choice for me. Um, I had the agency to play this card, but once I play it, the card takes away a little bit of agency, which uh, is nice. I, I, I now get the card and I, I decide whether or not I want to build around that card or if I want to use it to discard later for another card ability. So I like that about the yellow Baturn. And I just think the art is really beautiful from Courtney ja uh, Jossi. Courtney Jossi, thank you, Courtney, for sharing this art with us for the, uh, the fan art pack. So yeah, for various reasons, you can see all the different reasons I chose uh, from mechanical uh, to personal to art uh, to various other reasons. Those are my top 25 favorite birds and dragons from Wingspan and Wormspan. I'd love to hear about yours. Let me know your top favorite birds and or dragons from Wingspan and Wormspan in the comments below. And uh, I guess just as a reminder, we're posting this in the holiday season of 2024. Um, we have a lot of Wingspan and Wormspan stuff. So if you want to welcome someone into those worlds they haven't played before, you can get the base game of Wingspan. You can get the Wingspan Asia, the, the two-player standalone game. It's also an expansion. Um, or you can get Wormspan. If, if it's someone who maybe didn't want to play Wingspan because of the bird theme, maybe they're more into fantasy, you can get them Wormspan. And you can also enhance if someone already has Wingspan or Wormspan. Um, you can treat them by getting them something like the, the nesting box, if they have a ton of stuff from Wingspan. You can get them the fan art pack that I mentioned here. You could get them some of the accessories we have, like the, the gold eggs, the stone eggs. We have new stone eggs for Wingspan and Wormspan. Some of the upgrade packs or some of the other expansions. Just a lot to choose from if you're looking to um, kind of enhance someone's gaming experience who you care about in your life to bring more, more joy to their tabletop. Uh, yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. If you have any questions about our products for Wingspan or Wormspan, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.